are now going to have the candidate come to the stage. Candidate. John Sterling Howe. There's a video. Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes and home to countless small towns, country churches, and family farms. And it was on one such small family farm in rural Minnesota, a farm that had no running water, that John Howe was born to Richard and Bonnie Howe. It was here that John learned about hard work, faith, and family. We had five kids, four boys and one girl, and we had a good, good family. We, we grew up on a farm, a little 160-acre farm. It was a good, loving family. It's just that we didn't have a lot of money. I've known John for 40 years. We both grew up on farms, and as we got to know each other, I helped him out in his farm. He came over to help us out in ours, whether we were baling hay or raising pigs. And you get up in the morning, and you work all day. You put in 10 hours, and you do it all over again. Uh, you know. 365 days a year. John graduated from high school, worked his way through college, and held a variety of jobs from laborer to firefighter. John has all kinds of jobs, and he's excelled at all his jobs. Uh, he was a firefighter out in uh, the West Coast where he's fighting fires, became a leader. He was a prison guard working in St. Cloud as a prison guard. And I think one of his biggest accomplishments that I think that really is John's a tribute to the person is he got into the Sears franchises, and he would buy Sears franchises that were not performing. He was able to go in, uh, meet the people, turn them around, and make them successful and then sell them back to whoever wanted to buy the store, usually an employee. So he was really uh, phenomenal at being a leader in a business setting. After working for corporate, John opened and owned his own chain of Sears stores. As John's business grew, so did his family. In 1989, he met Lisa, a beautiful young girl from rural Iowa and successful businesswoman. John has been um, in love with Lisa from the first day he met her, and they just hit it off, and they've been very close ever since. I love John because of his smile. You know, when he smiles at me, I know that uh, that warmth and that love is going to take us, hopefully, like his parents or my parents, into our 50th anniversary or our 60th anniversary, that we're going to be beside each other for the rest of our lives. They soon married and were blessed with children. John loved being a husband and father and spent his free time coaching, helping with homework, or playing catch. His greatest accomplishment is, is his family. I mean, you look at our children, you look at what we have, um, it's his family, number one. As his family grew, so did his reputation. John was elected mayor of Red Wing, where he reduced spending and saved taxpayer dollars. In 2010, he answered the Republican Party's call to run for state Senate. John won a seat that was held by a Democrat for 18 years and soon earned a reputation as a solid conservative. I think we're very conservative. You can, you can tell we, just by the way we live our lives and, and, and I think that's the biggest telling thing is, is how we grew up and, and how we live uh, very conservatively, we don't, you know, spend a lot of money even though we might have some, but we grew up without any money. In the state senate, John worked to shrink the footprint of government and restore our liberties. He fought waste, fraud, and abuse, and balanced the state budget despite a six billion dollar shortfall without raising taxes. John also passed common sense laws and ended government overreach. He led the effort in the Senate to pass the yellow flashing arrow bill that allows left-hand turns and authored the church ladies bill that allowed churches to serve meals after events without government interference. John is pro-life, pro-family, pro-second amendment. John also voted to defend marriage and has a 100% rating with Minnesota right to life. He's also an avid sportsman and dedicated to protecting our Second Amendment rights. Today, John is a successful entrepreneur and businessman who owns countless residential and retail properties. 
John Howe isn't a career politician or political insider. He's a rock-solid conservative who spent his life building a business and raising a family. Well, John's lived here for as long as I've known him. He goes to church here regularly. His kids go to the public school here in town. Um, he ingrains himself in the community so everyone knows John and likes him. Faith is important to John. Uh, we've had plenty of opportunities to pray together. My background is in parachurch leadership and ministry, and uh, I appreciate the opportunities to pray with John and have meaningful discussions about what the Bible has to say, about how uh, God wants us to live and, and uh, how we uh, live out that faith. And I've seen that in John, and I greatly appreciate his, his commitment to Christ. John is the kind of person that is very passionate, he's caring, uh, whether it's his own family or somebody else's, he's willing to give that extra hand. Um, you know, we've seen each other go through the highs and the lows and, and John will step up. My son has cystic fibrosis, John was the first one that got there. He was there for me. That's the kind of guy he is. A proven conservative, John Howe is the only candidate born and raised in Minnesota who's built a business and raised a family here and lived among the people of the 2nd District. And we can count on John Howe to defend our conservative values, fight for our liberty and freedom from government overreach, and defend our Constitution. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Howe. I'm a voting delegate from Stevens County, Minnesota, and I'm happy and proud to place in a nomination for Secretary of State my younger brother, John Howe. Good morning. I'm Jim Howe, another older brother of John, and uh, I'm a delegate from Benton County, live in St. Cloud, and I'm honored the uh, second denomination of my brother John, the Secretary of State. I'm Representative Jeff Howe. I represent the great district of 13A, and the people of Senate District 13 are going to have the opportunity to vote for two Howes in this election, because I'm running for the Senate District 13, and John Howe, I nominate him to bring integrity back to the Secretary of State's office, vote for John Howe. Thank you very much. And I'm Lisa Howe, his wife, partner, and number one supporter. And I nominate John Howe for Secretary of State, along with my daughter, Caitlin Howe. Good morning, how are we doing today? All right, let's get fired up. Boy, we've heard from a lot of great candidates and I tell you, it's so great to be here. You know, four years I asked for the nomination for Secretary of State, I didn't get it. Persistence pays off. I'm back again to ask for your support and your endorsement for Secretary of State. I know the video, uh, pretty much explained everything and our 84 year old mom, you got to meet all the brothers here and I've got a, a sister too. Uh, I'm the youngest of five and my parents were working on perfection. They stopped with me. I don't know if that meant they gave up or you know. <laughs> but you know the name recognition is really important when it comes to Secretary of State. So when you're sitting at a stoplight and you see somebody you know, with that yellow blinking arrow, say I know the guy who passed that. That's how he's running for Secretary of State. But with your support and with Doug Warlow's support, we are going to bring integrity back to Minnesota elections. You know, in 2012, 13 Democratic senators violated the campaign coordination law. 11 of them became sitting Minnesota senators. And we lost the majority in the Senate and in the House. When I'm the Secretary of State, if you cheat, you're not going to get to keep your seat. All the DFL had to do that year was pay a $100,000 settlement. That's all they had to do. And they got to retain those 11 Minnesota Senate seats. That's not going to happen. We're going to bring 
election integrity, we want fair and honest elections. And you should not be using the Secretary of State's office for a partisan politics. So I need your support. I need you to spread our name. When somebody says, I'm not, the only campaign promise I'm going to make is not to mention my opponent's name because no one really knows who the Secretary of State is. We do because we're in politics. But when somebody asks you who you're going to vote for, you don't say who, you say oh. thank you. Okay, because we have just one candidate, the body may move to handle the process without ballots, and I would entertain a motion to... I didn't even finish. I have a motion, and I have a second. Uh, all in favor of voting to endorse by acclamation, say aye. Aye. And you over there if you want to vote no. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, all in favor of conducting the endorsement by vote acclamation, uh, please say aye. aye. Those nay. Okay, we will now vote. If you would like to vote by rising acclamation, please stand up to vote for John Howe. Would any of you like to vote no? In the estimation of the chair, you are endorsed. Thank you. I am so honored and so excited to be your endorsed candidate. We're going to win. You know, we, say, we came so close four years ago. We only lost that election by 21,428 votes. So, you know, you take this room right here, and if you can get 11 people who didn't vote the right way or failed to vote, we can win this seat. Now, we're going to win as a team, and we can win as a team. We're going to say, Great leaders for, for the U.S. Senate race, and we're going to have a great candidate for, US, or for Minnesota governor. And I know I can't ask you for a donation here, but if you look at that 2018, there's a plan in that 2018. The second half of it, I need you to get 18 people to vote for me that either didn't vote last time or voted the wrong way. And you can figure out what the 20 means. You can go to my website, that's soshow.com. And we're going to win this election. And I tell you, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Uh, let me know of any of the events that are out there and I'll be at. And again, when you're at a stoplight <laughs> and you're with somebody and you see that yellow blinking light up there, say, I know the guy who passed that. And, you know, I carried the bill that that was in, and it's just, it, it keeps efficiency and everything, and we need common sense. But, you know, I, when I worked at the uh, St. Cloud Prison, I always, I always said uh, everybody ought to work at a prison for at least six months, but no more than six years get a little twisted in, the, in, <laughs> in prison. But I went to school for criminal justice, and about a month ago, I was at graduation. I got my master's degree a month ago at St. Cloud State University. And I was sitting young, thank you, and, and it, you know, it was great, it, a lot of investment and time, and I s decided I was going to walk across the stage and get my diploma, and I was sitting next to this young guy who was getting his MBA, and he looked at me and says, how old are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm 54. And he says, you're 54 and you're getting your master's degree. He says, what are you going to do now? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, well, I'm kind of hoping to become a secretary. And he said, a secretary? And I said, that's right, I'm running for secretary of state. So remember, one more time, it's not who, it's how. Thank you.